Once upon a time, I asked a very simple question. If someone were insane enough to hold up the medieval religions in an Icelandic incest simulator to modern standards of Western morality, which one of them would be considered the most barbaric? Actually, I guess as far as sentence structure goes, that's a pretty complex question, isn't it? Regardless, I discovered the answer to my question, but the responses I received to that video were mixed, to say the least. For every person that enjoyed the framework I set up, there was another who thought me cringe. Soy, even. A fedora tipper, if you will. And at first, I laughed these people off as modern-day barbarians, probably some neo-pagan Norse or perhaps neo-Aztec who were irate that I was badmouthing their ideological ancestors. But then I realized that they were right. So when it came time to create my absolutely 100% objective and definitive review of the relative moral values of the 1,200-year-old religions, as represented in the updated and modernized sequel to the aforementioned Finnish harem visual novel, I decided to flip my standards of moral relativism on their heads. This is not a video about which CK3 religion is the most barbaric. This is a video about which CK3 religion is the most based. And while I tried to make it clear in the description of the CK2 video that I was just having a bit of fun, I've decided to stop lying about that as well. This video is not a joke. It is completely serious and fully representative of my most deeply held beliefs. Professing my admiration for the millennia-old heresies contained within this video is not an absurd fantasy and is certainly not as ridiculous as the concept of holding up ancient systems of belief to the social standards that the Western world has decided to settle on as of Anno Domini 2022. Crusader Kings 3 conveniently standardizes and explicitly states the powers and mechanics of all its religions, preventing situations like I had with the previous video, where I would keep discovering more unadvertised differences between various religions that required me to change their positions on the scale and restructure the script 30 fucking times. So that was nice. Positive points make a faith rise higher on the based scale, while negative points cause it to fall to the depths of cringe and blue-pilled. Points are awarded for the following categories. The communal identity tenet, since you're defining the best members of your faith as people who are also of your culture, as obviously both are inherently superior. Fundamentalist religious attitude is the best at preventing heretical thought from appearing. The ability to slaughter infidels by the thousands and wage great holy war through the armed pilgrimages or struggle and submission tenets is highly based. The consorts and concubines marriage doctrine is clearly the most based of the available three, because in addition to allowing you four sexual partners while denying three quarters of them any legal rights, it is also the only way to fuck someone against their will. Genghis Khan, who registers higher than almost any historical figure on the based scale, was a major proponent of this doctrine and will be following in his footsteps for this point system. But why stop with exploiting women who have no relation to you? Why not expand the scope of the traditional family values you love so much, and add some based points for both unrestricted marriage to marry anyone you want, regardless of how close they are to you in blood, and divine marriage to actively encourage the same practice? In traditional belief systems, having a daughter is the ultimate cuckoldry. Your precious little girl can never be stolen away and ravaged by another man if you are that man. And finally, violence and bloodshed is the most based activity you can partake in. Everyone does it anyway, so making it a part of your religious beliefs is simply an acceptance of the natural order of the world and the inherent nature of man. Three based points for being allowed to raid, four for the warmonger tenet, which actively punishes you for not being constantly out spilling blood, and five points for either the human sacrifice or gruesome festivals tenets, making the rivers and lands of the old world run red in times of peace as well as war for the glory of your gods. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there are, of course, certain practices that drive a faith away from being based. The always-allowed divorce doctrine throws the sanctity of marriage in the garbage and must be punished. The sanctity of nature tenet places undue importance on preserving the natural world, which obviously exists only for you to dominate if you have the strength to do so. If all those trees didn't want to be cut down, they would fight back instead of just sitting there and taking it. The adaptive tenet is a disgusting admission of the weakness of one's own faith, that you need to make concessions to heretics and infidels to preserve your own safety, instead of brutally cracking down on them until they break beneath your iron fist. Assigning your clerics to focus on alms and pacification by doctrine is similarly asinine. Investing in the dregs of society and weakening their ability to pull themselves up by the bootstraps through condescending charity instead of galvanizing them to war or demanding loyalty. Within certain otherwise strong faiths, there is a cringeworthy admission of legitimacy to adjacent faiths through special doctrines such as the various schools of Muslim thought and the Christian ecumenism doctrine that softens relations between faiths that would otherwise see each other as hostile. 
Live and let live is inherently unbased ideology for the same reasons as being adaptive, and erode the legitimacy of any faith that participates in such a limp-wristed alliance. The concept of laws of adultery being doctrinally equal across both genders is anti-red pill to the highest degree. Ever hear the parable of the lock and the key? I don't think I need to say any more than that. If any faith puts equal levels of importance on men spreading their wild oats as nature intended and vile harpies whoring themselves out to any geriatric mayor who took the seduction focus, that faith damages their own reputation. Accepted same-sex relations is cringe for self-evident reasons. It's the Middle Ages, and you're not even going to take advantage of the last time in history it was socially acceptable to dab on the gays? Unbased. Not having a head of faith sucks. How are you even supposed to know what the right thing to do is without a guy in a fancy hat telling you what God wants? Pluralist religious attitude concedes that you may not be correct about absolutely everything, and is therefore unbased. Equal clerical gender, unbased. Equal view on gender for rulership, unbased. Unbased and unbased. Not being able to marry any of your close kin, blue-pilled, show me one piece of evidence that impregnating your cousin repeatedly over multiple generations could ever lead to anything bad, I'll wait. Pastoral isolation is a tenet for subhuman Irish and Balkan centrists who think they can avoid their responsibilities by whining about just wanting to be left alone. How did that work out when the English or the Ottomans came knocking at your doors, huh? All the syncretism tenets damage the base of any religion that accepts them. Gnosticism is weird and accepting and wants me to give away land instead of holding it for myself, so I hate it. And for the bluest of the blue-pilled, both of the tenets that espouse pacifism prevent you from raiding and take away more of the precious CBs you need to paint the map in your favorite colored marker are the worst offenders on this entire list. Now that our scale has been established, let's start at the bottom with the faiths that are about as based as a house of cards. These stupid yin-yang religions that I can't pronounce do nothing right and almost everything wrong. Both of them are pacifistic, obsessed with equality, pluralistic, have no head of faith, and give out money to the poor. They're barely even real religions, they don't believe in anything aside from being the best person you can be, man, and becoming immortal through doing tai chi and snorting powdered dragon bones. Catharism brings early and embarrassing representation for the noble Christian religion. They literally misread the Bible and think Satan created the world instead of God, and because of that they decided to be obnoxious contrarian pacifists and decide they can exist without gender or religious hierarchy. It was only a matter of time before that tree-sitting, reincarnating, quote-unquote enlightened soy cuck Buddha stuck his nose into this discussion, and the Theravada and Mahayana branches of Buddhism are the worst offenders of his religion. Theravada believes enlightenment comes individually, Mahayana believes it's shared across all living beings, both of them squawk endlessly about doing no harm and accepting other people. Kuramism is what happens when you take all the fun parts out of Zoroastrianism and replace it with limp-dick pacifism, hard-dick sodomy, and constant hand-wringing about whether your beliefs are actually right or not. Why have a religion in the first place if you're going to be so indecisive? Back to the unfortunate dregs of Christianity, Bogomilism is next up in being only slightly more based than the previous religions. But that's not saying much. We're still in the realm of pacifism, accepting other religions as being equally righteous, and gender equality. At the very least, Bogomilism is the first faith discussed so far to gain some positive points by affirming that it is criminal for women to be adulterous, but for men, it's only embarrassing. The Nangchos and Vajrayana branches of Buddhism, as well as Yapanaya Jainism, share the next category. The two Buddhist branches take a hit to their scores by having equal gender law, which even Theravada and Mahayana were sane enough to reject, but they end up above their contemporaries by allowing the ownership and forceful claiming of concubines. Yapanaya has many cringe characteristics, but manages to land in this category due to being righteous in its beliefs instead of pluralistic, and only allowing men to be priests. Yapanaya is also the only faith in the game that you can look up characters for at the beginning of a playthrough and get to see tits. This doesn't affect the score at all, I just think it's epic. The other two branches of Jainism land right above their brother, with the only meaningful difference being that their societies are male-dominated instead of equal. We're still in heavy negative points territory, but I'll give credit where it's due, even to people who are so grossly pacifistic that they won't even accidentally eat spiders in their sleep. Hinduism was one of the top performers on the barbaric... I mean, based scale in the CK2 video, so it's unfortunate to see how far it's fallen in this game. Kalikula and Srikula Shaktism are the worst of the bunch, both having equal gender law, pluralist views on other religions, no head of faith, always allowed divorce, acceptance of same-sex relationships, equal clerical genders, and a taboo against the objectively most true form of all love, the love between an overweight 50-year-old uncle and his teenage niece. 
Canatism is basically Christian accelerationism. The way to salvation is to experience absolutely everything that it's possible to experience, including all the uncomfortable and terrible things. Normally this is done over multiple lifetimes through the passage of the soul from body to body, but by experiencing everything in a single lifetime you can save your eternal soul much more quickly. You'd think this would make it a do-whatever-you-want kind of faith, but in-game mechanics it unfortunately still restricts all kinds of fun behaviors, and its espousal of freedom and universal experience only extends to sodomy, women's suffrage, and letting other people believe in a different god. Our first big tie comes in this category, bringing together two more dualist faiths in Priscillianism and Sethianism, and all of the remaining Hindu faiths, Shaivism, Vaishnavism, Krishnaism, Smartism, and Advaita Vedanta. Priscillianism and Sethianism are both cringe pluralist Gnostics who can't decide whether boys or girls are better at reading the dualist Bible. Hindus all have the same mechanics, with rules about head of faith, divorce, and homosexuality that are less restrictive than some modern Western nations, and they don't allow cousins to get married. The Kirstiani are up next, proving once and for all that the Bosnians can't do anything right. On the border of the Catholic and Orthodox world, they chose to sit on a mountain and not pick either side, and everyone threw up their hands and legitimized that decision by including them in the ecumenism boat. Next is an eclectic three-way tie between Druze, Manichaeanism, and Ari Buddhism. Since we're starting to see the Muslim faiths, I should mention some commonalities across them. Most of them tend to have the struggle and submission doctrine, which, among other effects, allows you to call a jihad. After some research, I found that this word translates to jihad, an English term meaning crusade. Who says video games can't teach you anything? Big-ass holy wars to prove that your religion is right and that you should own land because your religion is right is obviously very based. However, most of the Muslim faiths also throw this goodwill out the window through a combination of having their priests spend all their time giving money to poor people, and the faiths of the Sunni, Shia, and Muakima schools making concessions within themselves to agree to disagree. I'll admit that my understanding of the actual differences between two different Shia faiths is tenuous, but as far as I can tell, this means that any Muslim faith agreeing to such an alliance is debasing their own legitimacy, just as the Christians do with ecumenism. Druze is weird Lebanese Gnostic Islam named after a mountain, Manichaeanism is Persian paganist Christian Islam, and the only dualist faith you'll actually see in a normal game of CK3, and Ari is for people who want to be monks but also want to drink and screw in the woods. It's the most based you can get as a Buddhist, which is still not very based, but they're trying. Two forms of Christianity, Insular and Lollardy, share the next step up on the ladder. Similar to the Christiani, Insular Christians are isolationist potato eaters who claim they just want to farm for God's sake and don't want to listen to the Pope. And like the Christiani, they only survive because everyone else decided their land and their gene pool are so useless that forcibly beating church canon into them isn't worth the time and effort. Lollardy is pretty middle-of-the-road in its social beliefs, but is severely hampered by not being able to let go of that pacifism crap. Next is a five-way tie between Sufriism, two more dualistic faiths in Sabianism and Valentinianism, Zheng Yi, the white sheep of the Taoist religion, and Gyur Bun, our first representative from the pagan religious family. Sufriism is gender-equal Islam with no religious head to make use of struggle and submission's jihad ability, and therefore barely counts as Islam. Sabianism and Valentinianism rise above their dualist cousins due to actually having a religious head guiding the faith's efforts towards something productive. Zheng Yi is significantly more based than the other two forms of Taoism due to not being pacifistic or pluralistic, having a head of faith, and putting its priests to do something more productive than charity. Gyur Bun is unique among the pagan faiths in that it is the only one to start as a reformed faith. However, this makes it significantly lower on the tier list than all other pagan religions, because being reformed means it loses its intrinsic ability to raid. Combine that with being disgustingly syncretic with established Eastern religions and having a distinctly Eastern view of gender relations, and this reformed faith ends up as a shadow of its significantly cooler older brother. To its credit, it retains its ability to take concubines from its unreformed roots. Next up are Mazdakism from the Zoroastrian family and Conversos from the Christian family. Mazdaki was the second most tolerant religion in CK2, so it's interesting to see it land closer to the center of this list. Not much to it here, it's Zoroastrianism with equal job opportunities across gender lines, and pluralism and notably lacking in funny incest memes. Conversos are a population of Iberian Jews forcibly converted to Catholicism, who were then watched very closely by a certain inquisition to make sure they stayed Catholic. Well, clearly, they aren't Catholic, they're Conversos, so that inquisition didn't do a very good job, did they? The Conversos hold on to a degree of their heritage through the admirable communal identity tenet that ties their ethnic culture strongly to their religious beliefs at the expense of outsiders. But due to their own confusion of identity after being forced to believe in Jesus, they end up being just too tolerant of other people for their own good. 
They also have communion as a tenet, which is a complete waste because they have no head of faith to request funds or excommunications from, so it has practically no effect. Moving on upward, we begin to get into the meat of the Muslim faiths with Mu'alladism and Karmatianism. The first is Iberian Islam, as the armies of the Crescent crossed into the peninsula and began encouraging locals to convert, in exchange for a little bit of human rights as a snack. These converts and their descendants are, as a result, more inclined to listening to the other side's religious views and adapting to local traditions to keep the peace. But fortunately, they still know how to get down with a good old-fashioned jihad when the Catholics start to get uppity with their little reconquista. Also, they're Spanish, so it goes without saying that they're accepting of homosexuality. The Karmatians have fallen so far from when they were the second highest ranking non-pagan religion in the CK2 chart. Their violence towards other types of Muslims is less a part of their central identity in this game, except through their fundamentalist doctrine, and the combination of Gnosticism, lacking a head of faith, and tolerating sodomy places them rather low on this list compared to other Muslims, in a complete inversion of CK2. Finally, we get to have the funny incest memes that I so crave. This tier includes Messalianism and Adamitism from Christianity, Maturidism, Imamism, and Ibadism from Islam. Messalianism and Adamitism both suffer and benefit in terms of baseness due to their doctrines of doing whatever and whoever you want. Both of them have marriage doctrines unrestricted by family bonds, and Messalianism goes a step farther by actively encouraging close kin relationships through divine marriage. However, both of these faiths permit equality between genders, refuse to have a head of faith, and accept sodomy. Adamitism goes even farther by venerating nature over human strength, allowing unquestioned divorce and having its priests focus too much on charity, but it pulls itself back up into this tier by allowing concubines. Maturidism, Imamism, and Ibadism come from three different schools of Islam, but share the same milquetoast beliefs of no religious head and giving alms to the poor, while also being accepting of heresy within a certain degree of closeness to their own beliefs. Maturidism gets points back for having struggle and submission as a tenet, encouraging them to engage in holy war, but since they lack a head of faith, they can't make use of the ability to jihad. They're also disappointingly pluralists. Malabarism, the world's least based Jews, share their next tier with the Alawist sect of Islam. Alawism allows unrestricted divorce and female clerics, ew. Malabarism is syncretic with the Eastern faiths as a survival tactic to survive the brutal hellscape that is India. Speaking of Abrahamics that are getting too chummy with the Orient for their own good, Nestorianism, the Church of the East, shares the next tier with Alevism. Alevism continues this ridiculous trend of female clerics. Come on, Islam, you're supposed to be better than that. However, they don't allow anyone to get a divorce whenever they want, which just barely sneaks them up a tier. Nestorians are pluralist weeb Christians, and I have nothing more to say about them other than that they should move farther east if they love it so much, preferably so far east they fall in the ocean. This list is really stretching my ability to pronounce this ethnic gobbledygook, but let me give it my best shot. The next tier contains Mutazilism from Islam, Kabarism from Judaism, Kite Basilwayism and Meshafarisism from the Milete Tawuse Melek religion. Jesus Christ. Mutazilites backslide from the previous tier by allowing divorce anytime, anywhere, and not wanting a head of faith, but improves on the last couple forms of Islam by only allowing male clerics and accepting the struggle and submission, though again, they waste the ability to jihad due to lacking a head of faith. Kabarites are the only Jews that don't have the communal identity tenet, which puts them lower than the rest of their kin. The other two worship like a peacock god or something, so that's kind of cool. They're syncretic with Islam and allow free divorce. The next tier up contains the remaining Jewish faiths, Mandaism from the dualistic religion, Yazidism from the peacock religion, and the second pagan faith so far, Orisa. Hymenote, Karaism, Rabbinism, and Samaritanism all have the communal identity tenet to epically exclude ethnic outsiders from their faith, which is based, but are pluralist and have no obstacles to divorce. Mandaism is by far the most based of all the dualistic faiths, and similarly uses communal identity, and even has the benefit of being zealously fundamentalist and intolerant to heretics, but is unfortunately dragged down by still following material world-hating Gnostic beliefs and allowing women to preach. Yazidism is the best faith in the peacock religion due to having communal identity as a tenet, but is otherwise very similar. Orisa is the least based of the unreformed pagan faiths. While it gets a lot of points for being able to raid and keep concubines, it does almost everything else wrong. Equal gender for both secular and religious positions, no head of faith, which is an unfortunate effect of almost all pagans, pluralism, free divorces, tolerance for sodomites, and focusing its priests on alms rather than something useful. Next, we have Coptic and Waldensianism from Christianity, Ictilafism and Quranism from Islam, and Kermazdism and Arawardic from Zoroastrianism. 
Coptics are East African Christians, and they would like it to stay in that region of the world. Communal identity keeps their communities united against outsiders, but unfortunately a policy of pluralism in the face of Islam makes them weaker. While Denzians are just boring, all I can say about them is they're pluralist, but they keep the proud CK3 Christian tradition of male adultery being shunned, while female adultery is criminal. As it should be. All the Muslim religions I've covered are starting to blend together at this point. These two both have no head of faith, and like most Muslim faiths, they use their priests to distribute charity. However, this one gets points back for having struggle and submission, even though it can't make use of the jihad. Rather than the holiness of struggle, Quranism instead has a doctrine of religious fundamentalism. Kermazdism and Arawardic are religiously adaptive, pluralist, and let women preach. Pretty bad, but they do allow concubines. For the first time in a while, a faith has a tier all to itself. The Akam pagan faith stands alone. Like all unreformed pagans, Akam can raid, but has no head of faith, but unfortunately it's pluralist and has women priests. At this point, we've reached a fulcrum between based and cringe. Perfectly balanced, but nowhere near as good as we can get. Orthodox Christianity shares this tier with five branches of Islam, those being Asharism, Ismailism, Zaidism, Nizarism, and Najdatism, and finally two African pagan faiths, Siguism and Waqism. Orthodoxy's good Christian inequality of adultery is balanced out by its ecumenist acceptance of other Christian faiths. All five Muslim branches have struggle and submission, which are cancelled out by their acceptance of other faiths within their respective schools, and the damn alms and pacification doctrine that the Muslims just can't get away from. Siguism only gets base points from being able to raid and pillage, but it's pluralist and adaptive to other faiths, is a tree-hugging hippie religion, and like all unreformed pagan faiths, it lacks a head of faith and therefore no one to oversee divorce proceedings. Wachism removes adaptive but adds women priests and pulls itself back up into this tier by tying its religion to the culture of its followers with communal identity. Also, neither of them allow concubines, which makes them less base than the vast majority of pagan faiths. As we pass into the tiers of positive points, we finish up most of the remaining Christian faiths with apostolic, iconoclasm, and Paulicianism, sharing this tier with the pagan Donyi Poloism. Apostolic is an ecumenist church because it isn't strong enough to stand on its own, apparently, but it's exclusively communal enough to balance that out. Paulicianism has Gnostic trappings, but is fundamentalist and fiery. Iconoclasm has literally no factors in it that give or take away any points on my scale, except for female adultery being worse than male. Donyi Poloism is Northeast Indian paganism. They believe in the sanctity of nature and gender equality, so thank God nobody's ever heard of them. Yumeism shares the next tier with Rug Sene and Zunism. Yumeism is the lesser of two native pagan beliefs from the Himalaya. They're pretty typical as far as pagans go, but they lose out on points for being syncretic with organized Eastern faiths and gender equality. Rug Sene is the same, but instead of Eastern syncretism, it allows women priests, as well as rulers, where Yumeism keeps priesthood male exclusive. Zunism is another mountain-based Eastern syncretic pagan religion, but from Afghanistan instead of Nepal. In contrast to Yumeism, it has gender equality in priesthood, but not in secular rulership. That's it, otherwise they're identical in my tier lists categories. Catholicism made it pretty far up the base tree, but it's finally found its resting place. Armed pilgrims, in combination with a head of faith, allows the glory of the Crusades to spread their faith far and wide. They share a tier with two strange bedfellows, Gaiomarthianism from the Zoroastrian religion, and this pagan faith I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Gaiomarthianism has concubinage, but not close kin concubinage, unfortunately, and women priests. This faith is a Chinese pagan faith with communal identity, but also pluralism, sanctity of nature, and gender equality. It's otherwise similar to most pagan faiths. Raiding in concubines, no head of faith, free divorce, women priests, hey Macarena. Hellenism, the noble pantheon of the Imperium Romanum, squeaks out ahead of the previous tier by lacking the sanctity of nature tenet. While it does not consider the genders equal for anything other than priesthood, it does accept same-sex relations, an unfortunate legacy of the ancient Greekoids. It's pluralist in its beliefs, but communal in its identity, and unfortunately has no Pontifex Maximus to lead the faith without reform. Ugh, what could have been? And since I did it last time, I'll include a tier for generic paganism, which is actually slightly more possible to play without cheating in this game. It defines the general pagan traits as being raiding and concubinage for positives, but pluralism, no head of faith, equal cleric gender, free divorces, and plant worship for the negative. The final big multi-way tie of the tier list falls in this field, a four-way pagan dust-up between Kiratism, Bori, Kushitism, and Tautosism. Kiratism stands above the other Himalayan pagan faith by being male-dominated. Bori is an African religion, and the only faith in the game that has the doctrine of only female priests. 
They're also into gender equality for rulers, pluralism, and being gay, but they gain some points back by virtue of being one of the only unreformed pagans to have a head of faith. It's lucky that raiding and concubines give so many points on the scale. Cushitism is the old faith of Egypt kept alive by pagans who live nowhere near Egypt, and has all the same pitfalls as Bori. Taltosism brings us up to Hungary and replaces homosexual tolerance with pluralism to end up in the same category. Continuing up north in Europe, Slovianska Pravda is the paganism of the ancient Slavs, who differ from the majority of pagans in that they unfortunately do not have concubines. This keeps them from below the heights of true baseness, but they hold on to this relatively high tier by having communal identity and fundamentalist doctrine towards other faiths. Sedism and Vitalism, two pagan faiths from two different corners of the Old World, share the next spot up. Sedism is a male-dominated version of Donyi Poloism, giving it a solid two-point lead on its cucked cousin. Cuckedsin? Cuxin? Vitalism is Baltic paganism, differentiated from generic paganism only due to being righteous instead of pluralist. Melie, the thankfully much easier to pronounce form of Chinese paganism, is ahead of its tongue-twisting cousin due to not being obsessed with the sanctity of nature or gender equality. Even without communal identity, it still ends up on top. We're finally getting into some of the fun stuff. Azrakism, Mazdayazna, and Ukanusko share this tier. Azrakism is a true rip-and-tear religion, fundamentalist and warmongering with struggle and submission, but unfortunately doesn't live up to its full potential because it has no head of faith and has equal gender law for rulers. Mazdayazna is the Zoroastrianism I remember from CK2. It's got unrestricted and divine marriage to encourage funny incest screenshots, and concubinage so you can milk each branch of your family tree for as many incest babies as they're worth before tossing them aside like the dried-up husks they are. Yukonusko is Finnish Baltic paganism, it trades Slavic fundamentalism for concubinage and comes out ahead as a result. Zervanism is the peak of achievement for the Zoroastrian religion. It has all the familial relations of Mazdayazna with the addition of being violent fundamentalists, hampered only slightly by their sanctity of nature tenet. Tarumism is Siberian paganism and is technically the most recently added religion to the game, since it was added to give Siberian tribals a slightly easier way to reform their religion without needing to travel all the way to Finland to take over the Ukonusko holy sites. It is the first truly patriarchal pagan faith we've encountered, lacking any kind of gender equality and also being the only religion in the game where male adultery is accepted while female adultery isn't. The final organized religion makes a valiant effort and just misses out on the winner's circle, that being Almohadism. It keeps all the awesome violence of Azrakism, but has an official caliph and keeps women in the kitchen. Salute to these sultans. The bronze-based metal is shared by Kyarwe Bun in a huge upset from its organized and libcucked Gyur Bun cousin, and Tengriism, religion of the horse lords. On the surface, Kyarwe has a lot of issues. Pluralism, gender equality, tolerated sodomy. However, the standard unreformed pagan loadout of raiding and concubines is heavily supplemented by the human sacrifice tenet and having a head of faith. Tengriism gets its cred from being a warmonger faith rather than a human sacrificing one, only allowing women priests and not rulers, and not accepting same-sex relations. And now we're down to the final two, Asatru from North Europe and Badaism from West Africa. With no ahistorical Aztecs in the game to take the top spot, who will it be? It's Asatru, I mean, no real surprise there. The only difference between the two is that Badaism wastes one of its tenet slots on being adaptive and tolerant to other religions due to silly things like realm stability and needing to survive the large amount of religious diversity in the West Africa region as compared to the culturally and religiously unanimous Scandinavia, while Asatru wisely uses its third slot on the only thing that matters in Crusader Kings, war. In conclusion, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you disagree with anything in this video, that's your right. However, know that you're wrong and stupid. I will never amend this list as it's objectively correct. I will never update it. I will never make another one of these again, and I will not elaborate.